All right, so we know what a CSS variable is. We've seen that working in action on something that's a little bit more concrete, and now we're gonna see how we can use them inside of media queries to make our lives just so much better. It's, it's awesome. So let's, let's just go ahead and do that. So if you watched the last video and you're already using SAS, you might be wondering, what's the point of using custom variables? I already have variables and they're a little bit shorter to write in SAS or less or whatever preprocessor you might be using. And at the very basic level, they might look really similar, but in reality, they're quite different. Because SAS is a preprocessor, meaning that you tell it what a variable is and then when it makes your CSS file, it just replaces all your little variables with what you want. So in the end, the CSS just looks like normal CSS. With custom properties, they're a little bit different. They don't go away in a way like the SAS ones do. They're not replaced by the actual value. The browser actually shows it as the variable. So here, um, let's actually go look at uh, this one really fast, which we'll be coming back to in a second. But if I come and I look at this, um, if I look at my font size or my font family here or my font size, um, they're not showing me what it is. They're showing me the actual variable here. So that's really cool. Um, and another thing that this becomes really nice with is you can play around with them using JavaScript for, so for theming and stuff like that. Mwah, amazing, but we're gonna get to that in a different video. Um, one thing I wanna show you is just the way we can redefine variables in different places that you can't do with SAS. And this might seem a little strange at first, but we're gonna come over back to this one a bit after and uh, to explore it a bit more. Um, but one of the reasons, one of the ways this can really work is in SAS, it can get a little verbose. So I made this little example. This is something that doesn't work um, with SAS. So this is written using SAS. So this is a SAS variable. And I'm saying my font size is 45 pixels. And I want that font size to change to 100 when I'm past a size. But as we can see here, it's not actually working. Instead, what I'd have to do to be able to make that work is all of this. So I'd have to have a small font size variable and a large font size variable. I'd have to select my H1 and say that my font size is the small one at small screens and it's the big one at big screens. So now we can see it's working. So if I'm below a min width, it's using this font size. And if it's above a min width, it's using this font size. And you can see that it changes. Um, so with the CSS variables that do work like this, so this is really amazing. And I know I'm getting an error here, legal nan for value for function. Um, CodePen's just been giving me crazy errors the last couple of days. I'm getting all sorts of weird stuff, so I don't know what's happening with that. Um, but we can see here, I can declare what my font size is. I can say that it normally it's 45 pixels. If my screen size is bigger than 800 pixels, that has been changed. And I only have to give my H1 the font size one time. And now you can see that it's working. It doesn't seem like a big difference, but if we expand this out to a big thing, you can see it will actually make a big difference. So if we look at the SAS way of doing something, but I did it with the regular CSS variables here. I have font size body for large screens, H1 for large screens, H2 for large screens, body for small, H1 for small, H2 for small. So we can see that it's adjusting the screen as I go because I've said that my H1, my H2, my body have these font sizes, and then they get redefined at the larger screen sizes. So that works. It, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. Um, but that's sort of the SAS way of having to do something. And just to show you, it's almost like a, it's more than like my full screen here, and the font size is quite big, but it's there's a lot of code going in here just to change three font sizes. If we come and look at the CSS variable way of doing it, it's so much more concise and easier to deal with and everything because I can keep all of my variables in one spot and I don't have to redefine anything as I go. So if we look here, I have my font size body, H1 and H2, and then those change at a different screen size. So I'm saying that when I get to this screen size, I'm redefining these variables. And then when they redefine, that means I don't have to include my h1, my h2, and my h3 in media queries anymore. A lot of things don't have to be included in media queries because I can do it all with my custom variables, including those in the media queries. That makes my life so much easier. So we can see now the font size is small, the font size is big, and it's just so concise. I have all my font sizes, everything grouped in one spot. I have all, I'll have like all my normal styles together, 
I'll have all of the ones I need in my media query. And then I don't need to redefine things as much throughout my site. I'm just redefining variables and then everything else can just live on its own. I don't have to worry about it as much. I could be changing my line heights. I could be changing container widths. I could be doing all of that all in one place. And it just makes my life a lot easier to work um, on that level. And that doesn't mean that you can't use SAS variables and CSS variables together. And we are going to be looking a little bit why you might want to do something like that in another video. So if you if you think you can use this in workflow, let me know down below. Or if, you know if you don't see the usefulness yet of CSS variables, also I'd love to have a discussion with you. So leave a comment down below and let me know about it. If you did like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. And it's been too many videos where I haven't mentioned it, so just a big thank you to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me. If you'd like to know how you can support this channel, go and look in the description below. Find the little Patreon link down there and click on it and you'll find out everything there is to know. Thanks once again for watching and until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.